So I don't necessarily think that Ahmad has a higher ceiling in terms of potential compared with Garnacho, as they are probably about equal with Garnacho's peak maybe actually being higher than Ahmad's. But I certainly think that Ahmad is going to hit the elite individual level before Garnacho does. And one reason behind this is because I think Ahmad can offer more in multiple different phases of play, and you're going to see this as I tactically break down an idea for a pattern of play in the build-up phase that I think United could use, which also involves the likes of Harry Amas and Diogo Dalor, but I'll come on to them later on in the video. So in the preseason game against Arsenal, not only did we see Rashford and Harry Amas combining efficiently via a series of short passes on the flanks, but we also saw Marcus Rashford pick up an assist for Hoyland's opening goal, releasing Hoyland with a direct pass in behind the back line after making a movement deep on the flank, and I think Ten Hag could use this movement more frequently in order to open up space in behind the opposition's defensive and midfield lines for United's deeper runners to exploit. So when United have possession in the build-up phase with keeper Andre Onana having the ball, we primarily see Ten Hag using a single pivot in midfield rather than a double pivot. And so for this pattern of play, I am going to start with that setup. However, I often feel like United's build-up strategy lacks movement ahead of the ball in the midfield line, and so this is why we often see the goalkeeper and centre-backs with limited options, which often results in a long ball trying to completely miss out the midfield and progress the ball into the forward line. However, in this particular pattern of play in the build-up phase, I would have all three of the central midfielders dropping deep to the edge of the box, which in turn, if the opposition is pressing you in a strict man-to-man -man press, which the majority of Premier League sides will look to do this season, I would anticipate, this is going to then drag the opposition's midfield line high up the pitch subsequently stretching the space between the opposition's midfield and defensive line. And in order to exploit this, not only would I have the fullbacks making diagonal runs into central positions ahead of United's central midfield three who would have dropped off to the edge of their own box, but I would also have the wingers, Rashford and Ahmad in this example, dropping down the flanks into a deeper position. And I think that both Ahmad and Rashford have the technical and passing ability to thrive in this sort of position in this particular pattern of play. But you may be wondering, why exactly am I having the fullbacks make these runs runs into the central areas behind the opposition's high midfield line, when surely it would be more beneficial to have Ahmad and Rashford dropping into these areas. Well, I'm going to break down the logic behind this pattern of play in just a minute, but before that, if you want to pick up any new season jerseys or any international or club retro shirts as well, go over to Jersey FIFA. You can use code Atlantis at checkout for a discount. A link will be in my Instagram bio, which I will leave linked in the description. So the reason as to why I'd have the fullbacks making the initial movement into the central position is because with the opposition's central midfield being dragged into the United defensive third, this essentially creates 1v1 battles in the wider areas of the pitch. The centre forward Xerxes in this example, though Hoyland could also do the same, retains a higher position initially for the primary reason of positionally pinning not one but both of the opposition centre backs back on the halfway line, which works to give United a numerical advantage elsewhere, but also creates the maximum amount of space in behind the opposition's midfield line. And just personally, I think in a 1v1 battle, I think the United fullbacks have a much better chance of being able to run off of the back of the opposition's wide midfielders compared to Ahmad and Rashford when it comes to running off of their fullbacks. And also with the fullbacks making runs from deep, whereas Rashford and Ahmad having to drop off to receive the ball, the fullbacks body positioning would allow them to take the ball in their stride and use their momentum to then drive forward a lot more efficiently than either Ahmad or Rashford, who would have to receive the ball partially with their back to go under pressure and be able to turn and then accelerate away with the ball. And so this is why I'd be using Rashford and Ahmad to drag the opposition's fullbacks high up the pitch as well as a midfield free to drag their midfield line high up the pitch as well. And so when the ball gets shifted to one of the United centre-backs, this is where the initial movement infield from our full-backs works to drag the opposition's wide players narrow initially, which should open up the passing lane down the flank from the centre-back into the winger, who is dropping deep on the flank. In this example, it's Martinez into Rashford. Though Ahmad could also do the same on the opposite side as well. And so as this pass from the centre-back is being played, you want your wide central midfielder on that side to immediately be looking to shift across towards the byline in order to offer Rashford or Ahmad a short a pass back in field, while Xerxes ahead also drops off from the forward line into the space behind the midfield, in order to firstly open up a direct pass from Rashford or Ahmad on the byline into his feet or chest, a similar type of pass to the one we saw Rashford pull off against Arsenal, but also secondly, Xerxes' deeper movement works to drag an opposition centre-back high up the pitch, looking to open up space for United's runners from deep, which would be the two full-backs, who are now both running in field, and also one of the United midfield two ahead of the single pivot. In this 
example Bruno Fernandes. And so you can see here with just a few simple coordinated movements, you're able to open up multiple passing sequences in order to progress the ball out of the defensive third, whilst also being able to utilize the powerful forward running of your fullbacks and central midfielders in order to get in behind the opposition's midfield and defensive line. And this is exactly what creating patterns of play should look like. It's not the manager's job to completely control everything each individual player does, but instead look to create some coordinated movements and patterns of play to open up the passing sequences and the space for the players to then take advantage of. And I think with two very good technical players in Ahmad and Rashford on the flanks, two powerful fullback runners in either Shaw or Amas at left back, or even Mazraoui or Dallow at right back, as well as the likes of Bruno Fernandes, Mainu and Mason Mount, who can also provide powerful running ahead of Xerxes dropping off from the forward line, I think this pattern of play would work really well for United and enable them to progress the ball out of the build-up phase using a similar kind of direct and high tempo possession style which we saw from Ten Hag last season and does create that artificial counter-attack which could allow United to break quickly even though they didn't start the attack after a turnover but instead started with the goalkeeper having possession in the build-up phase. 